How is your soul? How is your soul? How's your soul? How's your soul? How's your soul? How's your soul? The joy that I have in Christ Jesus keeps me focus driven. Not only does it keep me focus driven, whenever I feel scared, frustrated, anxiety, nervous, and it, it happens a lot because I'm, I'm a single mom. And so the comfort that I have in all of that is knowing that I have the Holy Spirit. I know that I have my comforter. I know that that's my security in my mind. Whenever I feel nervous or afraid, that's really all that I have to go on. How's your soul? How is your soul? How's your soul? That's a question for you. How is your soul? How's your soul? to level out the lighting. We have so many events here and so many different things. We want to continue to be a blessing for people. So we're asking many of you that can, not some who cannot, many of you that can to give, it's cost 10,000 to redo these lights, 10,000, 59 dollars. The church is going to cover the other 10,000 that it costs just to hang the rigging for the lighting. So it's 10,000 to hang the rigging and then 10,000 for the lighting, okay? So we're asking you to help us as we're trying to make this as beautiful as possible. We have um, funerals happen here on the weekends. Uh, we're one of the few churches that still allow people under 200 to gather because of the size of our space so that they can lay their loved ones to rest. And we want to make it a more excellent presentation for those individuals. Now, you may be sitting there watching online saying, man, I've been, I've been blessed. My business is doing well. We're getting contracts galore. It's just been good. I can do it. I may be a business person, attorney, whatever the case is, I don't know. Or you may just be a lay person say that I could do that. I'm asking you to help us to do that. I promise you, we're not gonna buy a brand new ring with it. We're not gonna buy no rims for a car. We're gonna do exactly what we said we're gonna do, right? And so last week we raised, two people gave a thousand and a couple gave a couple hundred towards it. And so we're not gonna move until we get to that particular place. So many of you, I wanna ask you a question. Your, your jobs, they're a resource, God's our source. If everybody, if everybody did what they did and tithed, we wouldn't even need to ask for it. So when you're saying, well, why are we asking? Because some of us are watching and we're not giving. Some of us are watching and we're not sharing and contributing in the work. So we're asking you right where you are to trust in Jesus. This ultimately is where our hearts are fixed, is when we trust in Jesus. So there are myriad of reasons and ways to give. You can text to give by texting TKCI 77977. You can give via envelope. You can give via Cash App, TKCI. Let me tell you this story and then we're going in. I was doing a dedication of a home yesterday and a gentleman said to me, I didn't say it to him, he said to me, he said, I got a $20,000 increase on my job someone, he got another job that gave him a $20,000 increase while he was buying his home. He said he wanted to make more money and a member told him at the church, a member who's not a minister or a pastor, a member said, hey man, if you want to grow more in your economics, you need to give like you've grown at that level. And he said, I started giving at the level of my expectation and God met him. Now I'm not saying that happens for every single person, but I am simply saying this, that if you trust God, you can't beat God giving. There's no one that can beat God giving. So as all of us get in the posture and sacred space of giving to God, whether you made money via trading, whether you made money via trade options, or whether you made money via property rental, whether you made money selling a property, all of that belongs to the Lord. So let us all do it. If you need an envelope in the sanctuary, just lift your hands, we'll do it. Those of you doing it online, thank you for doing it. Cash app is TKCI, dollar sign cash app TKCI. If you need an envelope in the sanctuary, raise your hand. We're not passing it so that way no one is, um, uh, we're not spreading germs of that type of nature. So if anybody needs an envelope, thank you. Those of you doing it online, thank you for, for getting together and doing that right in this moment and being generous as you always are, as you always are, letting God use you in this capacity. All right, we're going to let the band take us in for just a few moments, for two minutes, as you begin to prepare your gifts unto the Lord.
as we pray over our generosity, as this is seeds that we sow. They are seeds that go into the ground, and God multiplies them and uses them. Father, thank you for the seeds that are being invested into the house of God. May you cause it to be used, brought back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Cause men to give back unto us because we've given. Cause our level of generosity to create fields of harvest for us. It's in your son's name we ask, and we thank you for the opportunity to give, because many people don't have this opportunity, and we thank you if we are blessed with the opportunity to give, that we are able to give. It's in Jesus' name, amen. Just lift your hands in the sanctuary. If you have a giving uh, envelope, they will come to you. Thank you all. I want to tell you something that I think is kind of interesting. You'll see it coming on, on the coming weeks. Our empowerment home that we have on 26th Street, we let a family live in there for, for several weeks, several months actually, six months, and they pay rent towards it, and the rent goes to an attorney. If you miss somebody on the right side, uh, you pay rent towards it, and at the end of the six months, you get your entire rent back. Well, this past month, the family that was in that house has just closed on their brand new home. So uh, we will have the home available. We're gonna make some upgrades and updates to it. Um, and so we wanna make sure that you are abreast of all that is happening in the culture of TKC, not just what you see on Sunday morning alone, there's a lot more happening than what you would know. All right, with that being said, I want to bring your attention to this Friday from 9 to noon. We are giving away five to 500 families free food. So you don't have to be in, quote unquote, have no food in your fridge to come and receive. It's free for you to come and receive. It's, it's gonna be meats, it's gonna be all types of food. So it's, it's gotta go out that day because it's refrigerated food. So we partnered with Farm Share and our state representative. Um, and so we wanna make, Bracey, we wanna make sure that you are a part. And if you're able to serve, please let Pastor Duran know. We need about 15 volunteers that are willing to do that. They bring their own. And we're also working on prayerfully getting COVID testing here at the church so people can get tested uh, for free. Somebody say amen. 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 So a lot of things are happening and you're a part of the good work that is happening. Uh, this Saturday, I want to call your attention to 2 to 4. If you can meet me at the Orange County Public Library, which is on Hiawassee, they're holding Souls to the Polls. It's a rally to vote from 2 p.m. to 4. As you know, one of our own is running, and we want to be out there this Saturday, 2 p.m. to 4. You don't got to stay the whole time. Just show up, pop up, show your face, show your support. 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. this coming Saturday at the Hawassi Library. So if you would do that for me, I would greatly appreciate it. I'll be there prayerfully with you all at 2 p.m. to celebrate. You'll see it on social media. If you're not following our social media, you're in sin. So I want you to come out of sin and follow our social media, follow what we're doing. That's how you stay abreast of all the different updates that are happening. It's kind of, we don't want to blow you up texting you. So stay abreast by watching our social media page. And those of you who are watching right now, do me a favor. Let's break our record of shares today. Let you be an internet evangelist. I know you are watching on YouTube. Share the link. You who are watching on Facebook, would you hit the share button? That's greatly appreciated. We so appreciate you for being an evangelist and helping us do this. Be, ad be advised, your children have their own YouTube kids page. Go on there and your kids can watch YouTube. They have it for kids and they have it for youth. So even if you're in the service, at the end of the service, take your kids and make sure they watch what they need to watch. Um, they have all of the videos updated. And so we have all the videos that are up for for the month. So make sure you go back and watch them. We want you to watch them. We want your kids engaged. We want you engaged. All right, with that being said, turn with me to 3 John 1. I'm going to read Hebrews 6. I'm going to read Hebrews 6, verse 19 through 20. I didn't give them this, but I'm, I'm focusing on 3 John 1. That's where we were last week. Um, but Hebrews 6, 19 through 20 says uh, this. Just write the note. 
It says, we have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain where Jesus has gone. Type Jesus in the box. Uh, if you're in a sanctuary, somebody say Jesus in your mask. Where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now you're on Third John chapter number one. It says, uh, dear friend, uh, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along. It gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to truth, telling how you continue to walk in it. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in truth. Um, verse number nine, we read all of those last week. But verse number nine, it says, I wrote the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to be first, will not welcome us. So when I come, I will call attention to what he's doing, spreading malicious nonsense about us. Not satisfied with that, even not satisfied with that, he even refuses to welcome other believers. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. Dear friend, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. Um, so I'm going to stop there, and then we'll continue on on the coming week. So, of course, you know this is about Gaius, who is an elder in the Lord's church. He ends up getting sick, and he's sick for a, a pretty grave reason. And the, uh, the Apostle Paul recognizes that I, I need you to get better. I, I wish above all that you would get better as your soul gets better. So I, I want you to physically, emotionally grow as your soul gets better. And so he gives this wish to, to Gaius, who is the elder in the Lord's church. And Gaius is really sick. His ministry, as I told you last week, for those of you who may have not been here or tuned in last week, his ministry was, he was a leader in the church and his ministry assignment was to host preachers that came into the city. And he would let them stay in his house. And as he lets them stay in his house, that, that's what he does. That's his ministry. That's his role. That's his assignment. And he ends up falling on the sick bed. And, and all of a sudden, there's a, uh, another gentleman in this text named Diotrephes, who you just read about. He is supposedly a Christian too, but he doesn't like the way Gaius does his ministry. And so Diotrephes has been doing all types of stuff, talking about Gaius and telling how Gaius is not worthy to do what he does and so forth and so on. And, and this is becoming an issue so much so that Paul hears about it, that he writes to them and says, listen, I, I will handle Diotrephes. Don't do evil for evil, because if you do evil for evil, that's not God. But allow God to handle it and allow me to handle it when I get back. So that's the text that we're in. And I know a lot of times we hear 1 John 3, and we hear 3 John 1, and we hear, I wish above all that you would prosper and be in health. And we make that our, our, our mantra, that God wants everybody to be rich, and God wants everybody to be prosperous but that's not really what this text is talking about. It's talking about someone who's actually sick, and Paul is just trying to wish him to get better. But with that context being established, I want to talk for a few moments this morning about this context of having your soul anchored. And uh, it was fascinating to me that I was watching a story on the Shade Room, um, and the story was about a a, a lady who is a, a fanatical, she is a popular YouTuber. And what happened to her was she was swimming with her son who was four years old and she jumps out of the boat. They were on Lake Puri in California. She jumps out of the boat and starts to swim. The thing that happened to her was that the boat kept moving because it wasn't anchored. And when the boat moved, it, it, it moved further and further out. And the more she swam, the more tired she became. She was so tired that she had enough strength to put her four-year-old back in the boat, but didn't have enough strength to get back into the boat herself. She ended up losing her life by saving her son's life because the boat 
drifted away because it wasn't anchored. And I want to talk to you today about your soul being anchored. I want to talk to you about your soul drifting away. And, and that's where I read Hebrews, and you might be saying, well, Reverend, where, where did you get, preacher, where did you get, where did you get, where did you get Hebrews from? And Hebrews is a, is a passage of Scripture that some believe Apollos wrote. We give Paul the credit because we haven't heard about Apollos, but most people believe Apollos wrote it, who was a very well-written wordsmith person. And, and, and uh, Apollos is writing Hebrews 6, talking about the promise of Abraham and saying that God is so committed to his promise that he gave his word. And his word is so strong that when he gives his word, it's like a guarantee, like God is co-signing on his word. And he says, we, we need to hold fast to the promise of God, knowing that God is our anchor, that Jesus is our anchor to our soul. He goes to the Father and makes intercession for us. Whenever we have need, Jesus goes to the Father for us. Whenever you and I have an issue, Jesus stands in between humanity and God and says, I died for them, hear them. Somebody should say amen in the chat and in the church. Let the church say amen. So here's the thing. Um, I want to give you this because many of us are anchored in worry. Worry is a cycle of inefficient thoughts whirling around a center of fear. Even in this time, we're wondering what's going to happen, how's it going to happen. Worry is a cycle of inefficient thoughts whirling around a center of fear. And if your life is anchored by fear, your soul will drift away. Now, the reason why I read about Gaius is because Gaius is an important guy because I read this particular text and then I stop and I think to myself, if I've been serving God all of this time and God forbid you end up getting sick unto death, are you able to sustain and keep trusting Jesus even though you're on your deathbed? Can you still believe that he is good and worthy to be praised? And the only way you're able to do that is if your soul is anchored. If you are reading this particular text, you should put yourself in this text that you spent all of your days giving your life to God. Now you end up sick or divorced or end up finding out that your spouse no longer loves you or you just found out that you were furloughed or fired and the apostle is writing you and saying, I wish above all that you would get better even as your soul gets better. And you have to ask yourself the question, it is a poignant question, what is my soul anchored in? Because a lot of times it is so easy to throw out, my soul is anchored in Jesus. But that's not always true. Can, can we take the mask off metaphorically, not physically in the church? But, but, but can we take the mask off and say, sometimes our soul is not anchored in Jesus. Sometimes our soul is anchored in what we heard. Sometimes our soul is anchored in what we saw. Sometimes our soul is anchored in the facts as opposed to what the truth is. And we need to re-anchor our soul. And sometimes we need to change the anchor to make sure that our soul is being anchored in God. So here it is. Does my soul, first off, does my soul even have an anchor? Does my soul have an anchor? Like, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Everybody's going to shout out, yes, my soul has an anchor. My soul is anchored in Jesus. But that's not true all the time. Because when the, when the boss walks you in the office and sends you an email, can I see you at 1 p.m.? And you step in the office and you heard everybody on the cubicle got terminated and you're next up in line for the appointment. And they tell you, oh, you know, well, we, well, you know, it's always positive, negative, positive. You know, you've been such a great asset to this company. We appreciate all the work that you have put into this corporation. And even during the pandemic, you've been showing up to work on time and we thank you. But unfortunately, due to the company uh, budget and the bottom line, we're going to have to let you go. But what we've done because 
because you've been such a valuable employee is we have allowed you to have the rights to a severance. And now all of a sudden you start thinking, my car note is due, my children's tuition is due, or if your kids are in sporting events, my sporting events are due, and my, I don't know what I'm going to do. Or if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, mm, I don't know about this, you need to go get a blood test. And you go get your blood test, and then all of a sudden the blood test results don't come back, and they call you, and they say, you need to come into the office. And then you really start to wonder, is your soul anchored in Jesus? It's another thing to say, I got married, and I'm happily married. And then all of a sudden, one day, you get a message text, we need to talk. And if your wife ever sends you that, we got major problems. Mayday, mayday, mayday. And all of a sudden, you sit in there talking, and I just I just ain't feeling it. Or your husband doesn't come home at night, and you're texting, when, when are you coming home? And he's not responding. And then you realize that this life that you thought you built is really not a life at all. Or you had a friend that you thought you can count on and have confidence in, and you never realized that they were screenshotting all your texts and sending them to your enemies just to let them know how bad your life really are. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Or you got a family member that you really felt you can count on and you said, nah, if there's anybody that I know is going to be ride or die for me, it's this family member. And you find out that they're violating your children. Oh, is your soul anchored in the Lord? Or oh, when you watch the news and you hear that thousands are losing their lives, is your soul anchored in fear? Or is it anchored in Jesus? These are real scenarios, real situations. And Gaius, the elder in the church, lying on his back, had to have his soul anchored in Jesus. Have you ever borrowed money and didn't have enough money to pay it back? Have you ever had more month than you had money? And you're wondering, is your soul anchored? Oh, it's easy to, you know, the, let me tell you, church, I'm not against the church. I love the church. But some of the stuff that we declare, we declare it because it's easy to just to say it. But God will test you on what you say. I worship you forever. Oh, is that right? I'm going to sing of your love forever. Oh, is that right? It, God, if you don't do anything for me, you already done nothing. Oh, is that right? And when God stops moving, we start complaining because our soul was not anchored in Jesus. It was anchored in feelings on how the day is going. And if you're not careful, you'll be swimming, enjoying your life, and not recognizing that your soul has drifted like the boat. And when you're trying to finally get back to get your soul back, and you're trying to get your anchor back, you'll find out that the boat has sifted so far away that you can no longer get back in the boat. And what happens to most people is they save everyone else and they drown themselves. You got the four-year-old in the boat. You got your children in the boat. You got your mama in the boat. But you lost your soul in the process. Gaius, how, 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 Gaius, the, the report from Apostle Paul is, is that Gaius, your soul is strong. And I wanna to talk to you for a few moments of time before you go to another church online. An anchor, y'all, um, an anchor is something that's used, um, I don't know why I want to say it, a an anchor does its best work where it's never seen. An, 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 an anchor plunges to the bottom and does its best work when it's not seen. Y'all ain't just talking to me there. An, an anchor does its best, I feel like preaching really. An anchor does its best work on the bottom. It's not when you see it that you value it. It's when you don't see it, you recognize the value of the anchor. The anchor doesn't show up. It's not a helicopter. Ooh, it's not a helicopter. It doesn't come and pick you up and take you out of trouble. An anchor holds you in trouble, but it doesn't remove you out of trouble. It holds you in trouble. 
it just makes sure that trouble comes but my soul don't drift away trouble comes but my soul don't move trouble comes but my soul holds still I know you want Jesus to take you out but Jesus is not going to take you out he's an anchor to your soul he's going to do the work when you don't see him and pastor I ain't seen God I haven't felt him he does his best work when you don't see him church he does his best work when you can't identify him church he's doing the work and you can't see him working Woo! an anchor works it works it goes to the bottom because here's the thing you need to know if you anchor yourself on the wrong thing your soul will drift away I wrote this morning, if you anchor your soul in people, your soul will drift away when the people drift. That's worth writing down. If you anchor your soul in people, your soul will drift away when people drift. Well, you know, it's, it's the reason why God said and you need an anchor in Hebrews, I believe, according to Apollos or Paul, we'll let y'all argue about that on Facebook. Um, I believe he, he said it because if you, you anchor yourself in things, things don't have a soul. So only a soul can be strong enough to anchor another soul. An object, inanimate objects, are, they're not strong enough. To, we, need a, we, need, we need an anchor that can identify with our problems but has yet not sinned. We need an anchor that's, that's strong enough that um, we need somebody with a soul. They, they need to have a soul similar to ours, a soul that knows plight and condition, but at the same time, it needs to be a soul that's profoundly different, a soul that's flawless and perfect and whole. That is the only soul that can fix us because it doesn't have to fix itself. Oh, this is so good because I, I, I had this epiphany and this, this, this kind of illumination, I would say, that you can't anchor yourself in your children. Because your children are not formed enough to anchor themselves. So you're pulling your children when they're trying to use you as their anchor, and that's not sufficient. And, I, and I'm thinking, well, maybe I can anchor, maybe my wife can anchor herself in me, or I can anchor myself in her. But then I realize that's not a good comparison either, because I'm so broken that I need somebody else to anchor me. And when she's looking for me to anchor her, I'm looking for her to anchor me. And the reality is, is we need a God that can anchor us both. And a lot of us are putting all of our efforts and energy into individuals. And it's not to say that you shouldn't trust and use your best judgment. But the reality is, is individuals are temporary and they're fleeting. If you put your anchor on me, eventually I'm going to die. And eventually I'm going to pass away. And you won't have this anchor forever. We need an anchor that's eternal but yet can be temporal too. Don't, don't, don't turn your anchor into individuals because then you make individuals idols. Individuals possess light, but they don't possess life. In, in, individuals, don't, don't anchor yourself in individuals because then we turn individuals into idols. Individuals possess light, but they don't possess life. You know how disappointed you are when you anchor yourself so much in somebody that you put them higher than Jesus? This Christian fanfare worship where we'll stand in line to see a person but won't stand in line on our knees to talk to God. You turn people into idols and they have light but they don't have life. They can't sustain you. Anchor is something that is used to go to the bottom that holds things at the top. And anchor is things that go to the bottom that holds things at the top. 
I can tell you because I, I want to talk about myself because you won't talk about yourself and I know this is a world that likes to talk about other people as opposed to themselves. But I find that my world drifts away when the thing at the bottom is not set right. When it's not set right, the things at the top stop moving. But when the thing at the bottom is set right, I need to make sure my anchor is anchored in because if it's not anchored in, everything around me starts to drift. My peace starts to drift. My joy starts to drift. My soul starts to drift. I just want to stay in bed all day because when the bottom is not anchored right, your soul starts to drift away. So here it is. <laughs> the anchor is never made out of what it's anchoring. You cannot anchor yourself in things like yourself. Oh, this is, I'm about to CD myself. You, you cannot anchor yourself in people that are just like yourself. You got to anchor yourself in something stronger. You got to anchor yourself in something greater. You got to anchor yourself in something deeper. You got to anchor yourself in something wider. And here's the other thing. Anchors protect the investment. You think God is holding on to you because he ain't got nothing to do? God is holding on to you because he's protecting his own investment. I'm protecting you so you don't drift too far and I can't get you back. I'm protecting you so you don't drift too far and I can't move where you want. I want you to move. God is protecting his own investment. Let me also give you this. And here it is. <clears throat> when you are properly anchored, when you are properly anchored, you don't rest in your own strength. You rest in the anchor. I can tell you're not anchored because you're restless. I can tell you're not anchored because I can tell you post. You're not like Gaius. You don't have the testimony that Paul says. I'm so proud of your testimony. But sometimes trouble comes to anchor us. Sometimes trouble comes to re-anchor us. Sometimes life comes to re-anchor us. And God will teach you that you need to be anchored in me. Don't you anchor yourself in your, in your status. Don't you anchor yourself in your career. Career. Don't you anchor yourself in your self-will. You need to be anchored in me and me alone. I am the only one that can hold you. I am the only one that can keep you. I am the only one that can sustain you. I am the only one that can keep you in your right mind. I love when the saints say that, oh, it was God that kept me in my right mind. We need to say it was the Lord that anchored me in my right mind. When I was about to lose it all, the Lord caused me from drifting. If I got not two or three that can testify that God has kept you from drifting. I thought I was about to lose my mind and the Lord kept my soul anchored. I thought I was going to be out there in the wayward way, but the Lord kept my soul from drifting. I, I don't need to anchor myself on anything less but Jesus Christ. I don't need to anchor myself on anything less than his righteousness because if I'm not anchored to him, I'm going to so far away I won't be able to find my own soul and I'm asking you today what are you anchored by are you anchored by your clothes it will drift away are you anchored by your spouse it will drift away are you anchored by your money it will dry up and drift away are you anchored by your politician they will fail you and drift away your soul has to be anchored in something stronger Can you give him 10 seconds of praise? Woo! A life that's anchored. I'm telling you, tests come to show you what you're anchored in. Tests come to highlight what you're anchored in tests come to highlight what are you are you anchored in your security or are you anchored in the Lord and sometimes we anchor ourselves on the wrong things but we got to anchor ourselves in something bigger than ourselves that will keep us stable when life tries to blow you I know there's a virus and it's real and it's taking lives but my soul is anchored in the Lord and no matter what happens my soul is anchored in 
in the Lord. I was talking to a young lady, buried her father, and I said to her, baby girl, this is the time now to anchor your soul in the Lord. You got to exchange the anchor. You had it on your daddy, which is okay. It's understandable, but now is the time to anchor your soul in the Lord because life will blow. The winds of life will blow, and if it hasn't blown on you yet, keep on living because the winds of life, they blow, but your soul has to be anchored. I don't care how many people walk away from the Lord. I'm going to stay right here because my soul is anchored in the Lord. I don't care how bad it gets. My soul is anchored in the Lord. I don't care how many times I cry myself to sleep. I'm going to anchor my soul in the Lord. And I got to close. I gotta anchor my soul. I gotta anchor my soul. People will try to get you to exchange your anchor. And you gotta tell them, no, this anchor works. This anchor works. I don't need that. This anchor works. I don't need what you got. This anchor. How you got all that joy? How you got all that peace? This anchor works. I don't know about you, but this anchor, it works for me. It keeps me. They say, well, how are you doing what you're doing? The anchor keeps me. The anchor holds me. The anchor lets me know I will be there with you. Let me give you this. Um, 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 let me borrow, let me borrow Joel. Come here, Joel. Let me show you something. All right. Um, I wanna, um, I gotta, I anchor myself. You're really big. I gotta come in the Come in the light so they can see. Stay right there. See, if I anchor myself in him, he gonna move. You talk about me, I'm, now I'm moving. Because my soul was anchored in something that's not stronger than me. You know what they said about you the other day? They, they said this. Oh, I'm about to go off. I'm about to show them. And you know what? Because your soul ain't anchored in God. But that's why you need to let this go. Sorry. I know your nipples hurt. Sorry. My bad. Let, let me borrow OC real quick. Come here, OC. I know you're on post. Somebody else with a gun. Go stand on the corner. Praise God. All right. Come on. So, so OC's coming. Um, hmm. All right. We're going we gonna to put this around you right here. When your soul is anchored with someone like this, it don't matter what happens. They said this about you, but the anchor won't let you go too far. You're about to post that and the anchor said, don't you do it. You're about to tell them that and send that text message. Don't you do it. It's three in the morning. Don't you do it. The anchor is so strong. It will keep you from failing yourself. Whoa. And sometimes it's not that God failed you. It's your anchor that failed you. You anchored yourself in the wrong thing. You anchored yourself in the wrong situation. I need an anchor that's going to hold me. I need an anchor that's going to keep me. I need an anchor that's going to sustain me. How's your soul? What's your soul anchored in? Pastor, they laid me off. But I got an anchor. I got an anchor. They said I was sick, but I got an anchor. They said I'd be nothing, but I got an anchor. They said I ain't going nowhere, but I got an anchor. They said that I'm not going to do anything with my life, but I got an anchor. They said they're watching for me to fail, but I got an anchor. They're waiting on the next news to come out, but I got an anchor because this anchor's stronger than me and it does its best work when it's not seen. Woo! 
I got to apologize, God, for all the times I was mad because you didn't move the way I wanted you to move, but you did your best work when you weren't being seen. You did your best work for me when I did not know you were there. Even though I don't see you, you're still working. Even though I don't know it, you are working. He's an anchor. You will keep me in perfect peace. Whose mind stayed on you. So many things will cause us to drift, but you anchor our souls. So God, if my anchor has been on other things, cause me to anchor up. If my anchor has been on other objects that do not have the capacity or strength, cause me to anchor up. Help me to anchor up. Help my soul to be anchored to you. Help my mind to be anchored to you. That I may prosper even as my soul prospers. That I may prosper even as my soul prospers. I wish above all things, yeah. I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. So whether we're in the sanctuary, whether we're online, Yahweh, may our souls be anchored in what Abraham was anchored in. The deity of God, the triuneness of God. Anchor us. And for that person that's watching in there, they're not anchored in you. May they come to the realization that they need to be anchored. And if you're watching online, this may be your first time, second time, third time. Or maybe you just watched and you're just like, man, I just, I didn't even realize how far my soul had drifted. And I want to reconnect and be re-anchored. I need to anchor up. Holy Spirit, in this moment, would you do your greatest work? If you're in the sanctuary and you're saying, Pastor D, I... I want to re-anchor my soul in the Lord. First thing I would tell you is a great decision. You're anchoring yourself in something greater than yourself. And then secondly, I would tell you that every Thursday we have faith talk, which is a faith growing, building block of your spirituality. That's where discipleship happens, where you can have a discipleship coach that can walk you through your faith. But this next step that you're about to take is an important one. It's one that you declare out of your own lips the shortcomings of yourself. And we all fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. We all have sinned and we all come up short. And Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Thank you, O.C. Like an anchor, they just don't move. I, I want to encourage you right now to make this decision. But the decision starts with a proclamation. The proclamation doesn't stop. It begins the work of the sanctification process of the Holy Spirit. So when you get saved, you're saved instantly in your spirit. Progressively in your soul. And eventually in your body. So right now, I want everyone, even in the sanctuary, repeating with me. It's a prayer, a declaration of acknowledgement that I need an anchor. Say it with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I hear your word. I respond to it. I need an anchor. I am a sinner 
in need of grace. I have sinned and crucified you to the cross. Today, I pledge allegiance to the anchor and the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Today, help me to anchor my soul. Lord, allow the Holy Spirit to come in and refresh my soul. Holy Spirit, sanctify me that I might be righteous, that I might be right. It's in Jesus' name. I am saved. I'm a believer. I am now part of the family of the Lord's church. In Jesus' name. Amen.